Bishop, Bishop, well, it's Christopher Bishop, right? So it's a, a, this is a machine learning, well, let's say Bible. Okay, so anyway. Okay, what else? Um, ah, yes, so in this lecture, there will be some proofs. Okay, so I know that, uh, you know, some of you are not mathematicians, some of you don't care about proofs too much, but uh, I think they are a nice, you know, like nice little gimmick, and, and just, you know, relax, I'm not going to ask you for, to do any proofs in any exam, right, so please don't all learn it by heart, it's just, you know, for you to enjoy, it, right, to see why we are doing things and where, they, where things come from. Okay, so some of these proofs look a bit tough, and we will go through them step by step, and, and we'll discuss them very slowly. So don't, uh, you know, don't uh, yeah, worry too much about them. Okay, so uh, last time uh, uh, we talked about uh, um, this uh, uh, some initial probabilities, right? So we said, okay, uh, we had an example of the incidence of a rare disease. We said, okay, let's say that um, one in a thousand adults is and whose range is in the set of real numbers. Okay, so, so far so good, that's just a definition. Okay. Now, the random variables are generally denoted by capital letters such as capital X or capital Y, and lowercase letters such as X or Y represent particular values of the corresponding random variable. All right, now <clears throat> we have uh, capital S of S, x of s is equal to x means that x is the value associated with the outcome s of the random variable x. Okay, we'll do an example. So let's say a student tries to log on to the Korea University portal. Now, let's say it's a very old school thing and the port can actually be open or can be busy. Right? So our sample space is simply open or closed, let's say then we can define a random variable x by saying, okay, so x of this open guy, we'll call it 1, and if it's closed, we call it 0. Okay, so then what does it mean? It means the random variable x will indicate whether or not the student can log on. Simple as that. Good. So let's say we have a second, uh, we have a second example, and we have a random telephone number. You just dial a random number. Now, this number can either be listed or the list, the number cannot be listed, is not listed, right? So once again, we can just define a random variable. We can say, okay, our random, random variable y is either 1 if the selected number is unlisted, or we can say, okay, it's 0 if the selected number is listed in the directory, right? So it's somebody's home. Now, um, yeah, so why do we do these type kind of things? So one reason is that, you know, these kind of descriptions can be more economical than uh, the complete listing. Okay, so um, now in both the previous examples that we saw, the random variable could take only two possible values, zero or one. So does anybody know what this random variable is called? Boolean. Huh? Boolean. Yes, a Boolean, yes, yes, it's a Boolean if you want. Uh, and so this is, we call it a Bernoulli, Bernoulli random variable. So any random variable whose possible values are zero and one is called a Bernoulli random variable. Good. Well, so, um, so I think, yeah, one more example. So <clears throat> let's say we have a gas station, all right, petrol station. And uh, in an experiment, um, we determine the number of pumps that are in use, that are currently being used, right? right? Uh, in use, yes. Now, we define three random variables. OK, the first random variable is what? The first random variable says, is the total number of pumps in use at the two stations. Okay, there's two gas, two petrol stations, there's a number of pumps at each, and x is the total number of pumps in use at the time. Okay. Y is the difference between number of pumps in use at station one and then number in use at station two. Okay, we'll just subtract. And then u is the maximum of the numbers of pumps in use at the two stations. Okay, so let's say you do an experiment, right? You go to, or you call the two gas stations, you find out, the guy tells you, yeah, there's two guys here, the other guy says, yeah, there's three guys here, so this is your outcome, right? So, okay, then how can we calculate x? We said x is simply the sum, right? So x of this specific outcome is just 5. And so uh, x is 5, so 
there we are. And similarly for y, we say, okay, we subtract what? We subtract the difference of station 1 and station 2. So we take station 1 is 2, right? Station 2 is 3. Subtract these guys, get minus 1. That's it. That's our y. And finally, uh, we have this u guy, which is the maximum of both of them, right? So the maximum of 2 and 3 is simply 3. Make sense so far? Any questions? Yes? At y, if we say that the principle, we have to make the value into absolute. Well, here it just says the difference between the number of pumps in user station 1 and the number of you in user station 2. And so the difference should be absolute. So no. Difference is just a difference, right? If I say 10 minus 15, it's minus 5. Difference is not necessary. I mean, you could ask, a different question would be to ask, does it make sense to define this type of random variable? That's a different type of question, but that's not one that we are addressing right now. Would you say we can define any types of random variables, and that's one, one particular random variable that we could define if we want. So there's no problem with that. Any other question? Okay, so, um, so what are we, what, what's our conclusion here? So it says, all random variables in the last examples had only a finite number of possible values. However, this, of course, does not need to be the case. So let's say uh, we have some uh, batteries. Okay? We have an experiment where we test batteries until we obtain a good battery. Okay, the sample space is then, so let's say the good battery is called G, and a bad battery is called B. So what do we say? We test batteries until a good one is obtained. So what's the sample space? Well, let's say this is our this is our two outcomes, G and B. Could be good, could be bad, right? And it says we will stop if we see a good one, right? So if we see a good one in the beginning, then we stop, right? But now let's say we see a bad one first. Then we see a bad one. Let's say next we see a good one, then we stop. Right? And this we continue, so. See, let's say we see two bad ones first, then we see a good one, and so on and so forth. So, you can't see this, right? So here it says, so it says G, B, anyway, it says here as well, right? <laughs> so, so the point here is we have two specific outcomes that are possible, and we know, I mean, that's just a theoretical thing, right? We just say, we test batteries until we obtain a good one. Right, so if we see bad ones for a long time, we never stop, right? we just continue testing. Now, we define a random variable x by saying x is the number of batteries examined before the experiment terminates. So x could be what? Yeah, please, hello, come in. Uh, this. Uh, so, um, x could be any of these numbers, right? So, if we terminate in the beginning, we just do the test once, right, then x will be 1. And then x will increase, and x can increase infinitively, right? So, a po any positive integer is a possible value of x. So, the set of all possible values is infinite. Um, now, um, question? Does it make sense? Yeah? Okay. So, uh, let's say we have a different example, right? So, uh, so my question now to you is, is this, is this a, a, a discrete or, so this x is discrete or is it continuous? Mm. Discrete. Very good. So, let's see. So, now we have latitude and longitude. So, now, let's say a random location in the US is selected, okay? And the latitude and longitude. And let's say our uh, uh, random variable y is defined by the height above the sea level at this location. All right. So now the largest value will be some mountain. Mount Whitney. We have anybody from the U.S. here? 
Yes, can we confirm that? <laughs> <laughs> Mount Whitney is relatively high. It's possible, right? Okay, good. And then we have the lowest value, which is death value. Okay, good. So now uh, this y, right, will be any number between the, in this interval, let's say. Okay, so also here there is an infinite number of values in this interval. That's clear, right? So, um, so now we come to the definition of discrete random variable. Okay, a discrete random variable is a random variable whose possible values are either a finite set or else an infinite sequence in which there is a first element, a second element, and so on. So it's countably infinite. All right? So <clears throat> now, a continuous random variable, <coughs> so a random variable is continuous if the two, these two things apply. Okay, the first thing is apply that you have a proper interval, and inside this interval, uh, you know, it's a, like a, it's a numbers on the line, you can, you know, zoom in as much as you want, and they will always be, uh, you know, we will always get a more exact number. All right, so that's continuous. Okay, so what does it say? Uh, it's set of possible values consists of either all numbers in a single interval on the number line, yeah, whatever, and or all numbers can be also the union of two intervals. Okay, that also, could also be true. And now what does the second guy say? So no possible value of the variable has positive probability. Mm -hmm. So the probability of a specific outcome of x is zero. Is that surprising or not surprising? Okay, let's think about it. So let's say tomorrow, let's think about temperature. Okay, tomorrow, let's, if I tell you the probability, if I ask you the probability that the temperature tomorrow will be between 10 and 50 degrees, what will you say? It will be very close to 1, right? <laughs> right? The probability of the tomorrow, the temperature, will be between 10 degrees and 50 degrees, will be very close to 1. Right? Except something very unusual happens. So it will be 0.999 something. Right? Now, that's a very large interval, right? Now I ask you, what's the probability that tomorrow the temperature will be between 28 degrees and 30 degrees? Will be smaller, right? Will be, I don't know, maybe 0.6 or 0.8 or something, right? The smaller I make this interval, the smaller will be the probability, right? If I say the probability that tomorrow will be 28.53780 degrees, will be extremely, extremely low, right? And that's exactly what this guy is saying here. So if you have a continuous interval and you want the probability of a specific value, will be zero. Yeah, I think that's a sensible explanation. Okay, so any questions about discrete and continuous random variables so far? Can you yes. can you elaborate more on the first condition with the first uh, one, this one? Yeah, all numbers in a disjoint union and uh, the second part. Numbers. Yeah. Ah, okay. So um, so it could be that you say um, so let's say um, I want to calculate the probability that tomorrow's temperature will be between five degrees and fifty degrees together with the interval of 25 to 35 degrees, right? So it says, can be just one single interval, I don't know, from, let's say, so it could be one single interval, and in this interval, you know, could be any number within these two, or could be just two intervals, right? Just more than one interval, that's it. There's nothing magical about this. So, is that a possible consists of either, in, yeah, it's just a, you just say, okay, it could be just one interval, it could be more than one. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, why we separate the continuous and discrete? I think that the continuous is the... Make, yeah, okay. Is, so, I understand what you're trying to say. I think I understand. So, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think what you're trying to say is continuous is the big group and discrete is a small group inside the continuous. Is that what you're saying? Is it, is a, is a, is it sitting inside? No. Okay, then, sorry, then continue, please. English, 
but she's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the uh, the more <coughs> more mo, uh, yeah maybe so you so what you, so maybe if I understand correctly what you're trying to say or what you're saying is that the uh, discrete is a special case of the continuous is that maybe the case so yes that is in, in, in a sense true however. As we will see, you know, we will later on we will come to distributions that are specifically for discrete uh, uh, for discrete random variables. So, you know, it makes our life easy to uh, define it like this, and we will see this at a later point. Yes. All right. So I tried to explain this with the temperature. This was my temperature example, right? <laughs> so, um, okay, so can I find another example quickly? So let's see. So, um, so okay, I have it, I have it. So let's say, you know, we have some, we have some people here, right? Let's say we, we collect the height of every person here, okay? So let's say this is the height, we put the height of every person, let's say, I don't know, the smallest person will be 101 meter 50 or something, approximately. Let's say the largest person will be two meters, approximately, yeah? Now we make a histogram, yeah? So, if, so I ask every person, say, how big are you, right? And then I make a little cross here, yeah? I ask all class, I start making crosses here, right, like this. Boom, 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 boom. Something like that, right? So let's say we have a lot of people, right? Then, I don't know, we'll get something like this. We'll be normally, normally distributed, okay? So most people, I don't know, so in Korea, the average height is 172 or something. I don't know, yeah? Just as an example. Now, what we want to find out with this thing here is I'm going to, say, I'm going to ask you, what's the probability of anyone <laughs> Being exactly one meter seventy two three eight four seven nine one three eight. What's the probability of somebody having exactly this weight, uh, this height? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Will be zero, right? But if I say, what's the probability of somebody having the height between this and let's say one seven three? That will be non-zero. Right? Once I start defining an interval where people can be sitting inside, it will be non-zero. But let's say the chance of somebody having being exactly one meter seventy is very low. Is essentially zero. Right? Because even in this interval, there is an infinite number of numbers, right? So the probability that somebody hits the number that you choose by chance is in fact zero. In fact zero. Yes. But like, how do you know that that plus, that uh, heights will be zero? This there could, one? Yeah, there could be well, I say for any number. I say for any number c, where I give it exactly, probability will be zero. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right? I just made up this c. This is my c, right? Yeah. But you can make up another c, right? So this is the same as saying, if you say I'm one meter seventy, it's yeah. never true. You're never one meter seventy. You're one meter seventeen point da, 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 with a with a thousands of digits at the back. If you measure it, if you could measure it as exactly, makes sense. Yeah. Good. All right. Any other questions? I saw it, yes. So when you explained um, about the number one, you said something related to interval, but I'm not, I don't understand why it's really necessary. Huh? Essentially. Ah, oh, right. Well, I mean, it's it's continuous within each of those intervals, right? So you say all the values from zero to ten, like continuous values, and between twenty and thirty. Okay, don't don't worry too much about this about this union of intervals, right? So let's say I want to find out 
the probability of somebody being between 1 meter 60 and 1 meter 70 and 1 meter 70 and 1 meter 80, something like that. Right, then I say, okay, I cut. I'm just saying, you could do this right, for continuous random variables. <coughs> Yes? If the condition one is satisfied, is number two also automatically satisfied? Ah, let's see. So this is starting to be a difficult question. Let's see. So if uh, so a random variable is continuous if the following two apply. So it said a possible value is consistent with a single number, blah blah blah. All numbers. Now, this I need to think about a little. I'll think about this one. I'm not sure. Anybody else? Has a, has a, has a, just any thoughts about this? So, could you repeat the question? Um, if condition one is satisfied, is the number two automatically satisfied? Okay, so to disprove you, I would need to find a counterexample, right? If I find one example that, said that you know, where this is true and this is untrue, then of course this makes makes sense of me. But I can't think of one uh, right now, so I'll think about this. So a good question. Okay, anyway, so any other questions? Okay, good. Then let's go. So. <clears throat> Let's say, uh, so what do we do? So probability distributions for discrete random variables. So we decide with the discrete case. So, <coughs> so a probability distribution of x says how the total probability of 1 is distributed among the various possible x values. Okay, so we come back to our petrol station. So let's say a petrol station has 6 pumps. Now, x denotes the number of pumps that are in use at a particular time. Okay, so this means no pumps are in use or all pumps are in use and something in between, right? And this is the probability of these individual, let's say, states. So the first row is the possible values of x. Second row are the probabilities of each of these values. Now, <clears throat> we can use elementary probability properties, properties to calculate other probabilities of interest. So we could calculate the probability that at most two pumps are in use. Right? Or the probability of x being smaller or equal to 2. So what is it? What's the probability? Easy. Hmm? No? Anyone? Is that point 0.3? Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Okay. So the probability that there's nothing is 0.5, right? And we say smaller or equal to 2. Right, so this is smaller than 2, right? This is smaller than 2, and we say smaller or equal, so this is equal to, so we just add these three guys, right? So we say this is the probability of x being 0, or the probability of x being 1, or the probability of x being 2, right? So we could just sum these three probabilities, and there we are, it's 0.3. Very good. So what else? Since the event at least three pumps are in use is complementary to at most two pumps are in use, how do we do it? We say, well, we know this guy, right? And then we can just say one minus this guy is exactly that, right? Because we say greater than three. Right, so we can do this again, or equal, so we have to sum across these guys. Or, since we know these guys already, we can just say 1 minus. Alright, so, and we can continue like this, right? So the probability that between 2 and 5 pounds inclusive are in use... 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Hmm. So, does anybody not know how to do this? 
You don't know. Okay, good. So that's fine. Please let me know these things, right? I mean, because people have different backgrounds, and it's totally fine if you don't uh, know this. So probability of x having the specific outcome. Okay, don't get confused by this kind of math right here. So, um, so um, yeah. So for every, so there is an outcome. There is a probability assigned to every specific outcome, right? Like in our table. Okay, so um, <clears throat> of course the conditions for uh, probabilities are still true, right? So the probability of any outcome has to be greater or equal to zero, can never be negative. And secondly, if we sum over all possible values of x, the, sum, the, 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 the probability has to go to one. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, right, so if you sum these guys, it goes to one, right? And, um, now, coming back to your question, you asked why we don't do continuous. Maybe it's already starting to see why continuous, uh, uh, why we do discrete. Sometimes discrete seems to make sense, right? If we would put this in continuous, that just doesn't make sense, right? There are sometimes are discrete things. Okay, so let's say, uh, so we have another example. So let's say we have a, um, what do we have here? So we have some lots, okay, some stuff, you know, it's in the factory or something. And they are supposed to be shipped to some uh, customers. Is it correct? Six thousand components are ready to be a certain supplier. The number of defective components, so there are some broken, some broken units, okay, is as follows. So in the first, you know, block there is no defective components, in the second there's two defective components, and so on and so forth. Right? So let's say you select one of these lots randomly, okay, one of these six guys. Then <clears throat> Let's call x the number of defectives in each lot. Okay, so what values can x take? Can take zero, can take one, can take two, exactly. So can take three different values. Now, <clears throat> let's assume the events are equally likely, right? So you just take any lot, right? You don't really pay too much attention. Then what's the probability of zero? One over three. One over two. two. Oh, sorry, yeah, one over two. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So, <clears throat> what's the point? What's the question here? So, we ask, what's the probability that you select one of these lots and there's no defective units? Yeah. If it's the same probability of selecting the lots, right? Then you know you just count. You say, okay, if I select this one will be defective, right? If I select this one, will be not defective. If I select this one, will be defective, and so on and so forth. So, out of six possibilities to choose, three will be defective. Yeah, so three by six is a half. Okay, what else? So, the probability of having one defective unit. Okay, there are six unit, units, only one of them is defective. So the probability of selecting exactly this one is just 1 over 6, right? Is the probability that lot number 4 is sent. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, 